what we can do is if you don't have a MIDI keyboard, uh, that's totally fine because you can just paint in notes. Let's do, delete all of this. Um, and then we'll just select this little pencil tool here and I can just go ahead and click notes in. So I can just put that there and I can drag it back. Maybe I want these to be whole notes and then we'll go down here, then up one, then maybe up here. Right. So that's good. Um, now let's say if I, if, if we look down here, these are the velocities of these notes. So we have four different blue lines to correspond with these four lines. Um, and what these pretty much are is if I put them all the way up, it'll be kind of loud. And the energy for the notes will be at max, a little bit lower and maybe a little bit lower than that. So if we play this now, you should be able to see. You can see that it has a lot of varying weights and, 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 and velocities. So it'll give a lot of a different emotion depending on what you're doing. So um, all this other stuff, we have a lot of things in the GUI. You don't really need to know that as the basic stuff, but I'll go over it really quickly. These little notes right here, they will create uh, whole notes, half notes, and, and so on and so forth. So if I click this guy we'll, and go to paint, we'll paint a whole note. Click this guy, paint, half note, this guy, fourth note. This guy, eighth, sixteenth, no, oop, sixteenth, there we go, and 32. Okay, well, if we go over here to snap to grid, we can turn this to triplets right there, uh, and then we can snap the grid to, to triplets instead of to, um, instead of to the grid or to eighth bars or half bars, uh, 64. So I like to keep that on grid because it's the, the easiest way. Um, if I go to step here, pretty much what this will do is we can paint in notes so this is great for like if you're doing hi-hats or uh, uh, drum patterns but you can also use it for any instrument so I can just go ahead and just I can just paint all that in it and then it'll the piano will go I could zoom in here and then just delete that by clicking it and then just do four right there so you can see how this would be great for hi-hats because I can just do really easy rolls like that so you can see that's super easy. And if we go back to piano, you can see that all those notes will still be there when we transfer back over. Um, so it's, it's super cool. We'll just drag a box over that, hit delete. And finally, if we go to score, you can see we have an actual uh, staff, which is super cool that Mixcraft has this um, in inside of it. And then we go back to the score, and you can see those are there as well. So it's really, really cool uh, things that Mixcraft has. Like I said, if you don't know anything about music theory, you won't be using this most likely but it is super cool. Really quick, let's get into effects. So if I have this piano here, I just put some random notes down um, <laughs> that, that, that I knew would sound super terrible for this, but let's go. Uh, so if I go to effects here, we can uh, add any effect. Like I said, you can also add your own effects by in importing VSTs, which I won't show how to do in this video. I'll probably make an, a separate video for that. Um, but I can go ahead and add some reverb. Uh, just go ahead and add uh, acoustic, uh, let me just type in REV for reverb and I'll just do some acoustic reverb um, and then we can change the uh, preset here from custom to all these different ones right here or we can hit edit and open up the actual GUI for it I can close that so if I, if I if we play this now you see we have a bit of a reverb more reverb right then this so this is kind of like the bypass feature active it doesn't say bypass in, in mixcraft it says active so that pretty much just turns the effect on and off so you can hear what it sounds like with with and without it if i turn the reverberation up and maybe the wet mix you'll be able to hear a, a complete difference it'd be way too much there you go so that's pretty much uh that for that we can add in a lot of different ones we can add in the compressor so if i go ahead and hit uh, com classic compressor pop that on you know, open up the settings, same thing, it looks different because it's a compressor, obviously we could change the preset from vocal to, you know, mix down or whatever, and then, and then we could just play it. Um, so yeah, this little checkbox also bypasses them. If you have more than one effect, let me just put a bunch of effects on here just randomly. Um, but yeah, so if you have a bunch of effects like this, which actually sounds a little cool actually it's kind of it's kind of harsh but i'll fix that but we can you can fix that later on but if you uh hit that it'll disable all of them at the same time so yeah that looks pretty cool you can delete them here as well um which is nice and what else do I want? this little metronome thing down here you can click that 
open up for recording. So if I just want the metro metronome to play during the recording stage, then I can. If I want to turn that off, I can turn it off. Then it won't play at all, even when I'm recording. But if I also want it to go during playback, I can turn that on, and then uh, it'll play during playback as well. So there you go. And I can also do uh, me uh, recording count and measures. So pretty much what this will do is when you hit the record button, it won't start recording until it does one measure. Um, so it'll kind of have like a little bit of a, a like a like in a camera, there's a timer just in case you want to like run over and, you know, get in place for the picture. That's kind of like what, what the count and measure is. So that's pretty cool as well. Um, nothing else is too big of a deal right now. You can add entire, you can add effects over the entire track. So for all of the instruments, really quickly, if I go ahead and I go to this uh, audio track and I just record some vocals, let's just record some vocals over top of this piano real quick. And we'll, I'll show you how you can, you can stack things together. So if I hit this record button while the audio track is selected, I'm so scared. Oh no. As you can see, nothing recorded because we don't have this audio track set up for the microphone I'm currently using. Right now, if I go ahead and I go to this, if I hit this little drop down box, you can see I have uh, three different mics plugged in right now, but not but not the one that I'm currently using. So I got to change to this mic, which is the one I'm using. And now you can see my voice being you know put through it, um, which is nice. So we'll hit delete and we'll do this one more time. And now you should be able to see. Oh, I'm so scared. Oh no, scary piano, oh no. All right, so <laughs> so if I go ahead and I play this, I can, I can solo to just hear the thing we just recorded. Oh, I'm so scared. And if I go ahead and I unsolo it, you can hear both of them together. Oh, I'm so scared. There you go. I can also clip this as well. Um, down here we have a little bit of, um, a little bit of hiss in this. We can go to audio and then just turn the noise reduction up and hit this little button right here to find a free space in the audio, which is right about there. So we'll have less static now. Oh, I'm so scared, um, which is nice. So I'll get into all this stuff in more depth later on, but I hope this uh, very quick um, overview video kind of helped you out. We can put effects on this. We can put some reverb on the voice that I just did. Oh, I'm so scared. Oh no. So yeah. Oh, I'm so scared. We can turn down the volume by using this little slider right here. And we can also pan it to the left or to the right. Oh, I'm so scared. Oh, no. And really quickly, this little button right here is the automation button. So if I want to automate this, pretty much what that is, I, I can just use these points. I can click points and kind of manipulate the track. We have it right now set to track volume. We can also do it to track pan or any effect you have on it. You can also automate, which is super cool. So if I go ahead and do and automate the volume, you can see the lower I go down, the volume will go down. So if I go ahead and do this, oh, I'm so scared. Oh, I'm so scared. You can see what it does. We can just click that and then just drag over top of all of them to get rid of them and put it back to zero. But that's going to be it for today's really short tutorial. This is the master volume right here. Um, but yeah, you can also change the BPM. You can also change the BPM right here to 144. The audio track will not change. So you have to go down here to use project tempo and then it will change to 144, whatever the project is set to. Oh, I'm so scared. Oh, no. Scary piano. <laughs> um, you can also change the original clip tempo to whatever it was. If you want to do time stretch, that's fine as well. Um, just change the percentage there. But that is going to be it for today's tutorial. Very basic, very simple. If there's anything you guys want to know about Mixcraft, I will be there to do it. Uh, I love this program. I'll see you guys in the next one. But until then, scary piano. Oh